She-Hulk attorney at law has an amazing lead, the return of Professor Hulk, and some surprising MCU connections. So what do you need to know before the big premiere? Keep watching to find out. At the D23 presentation in 2019, Ms. Marvel, Moon Knight, and She-Hulk were all announced as upcoming series for Disney Plus and Marvel Studios. Almost three years later to the day, She-Hulk Attorney at Law is scheduled to drop on the streamer on August 17, 2022. The series will follow the same format as WandaVision, running for a total of nine shorter episodes as opposed to the MCU's other shows with six one-hour-ish episodes. New episodes will drop at 3 a.m. Eastern on Disney Plus every Wednesday. If She-Hulk Attorney at Law follows the once-per-week format, the series will conclude with its finale on October 12th. This puts the new show smack dab in the middle of the release dates for Thor Love and Thunder and Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Joining the MCU in She-Hulk Attorney at Law is orphan black star Tatiana Maslany as Jennifer Walters, aka She-Hulk. In December 2020, Marvel Studios revealed the casting news on social media after Maslany denied her involvement just two months prior. The new series marks the first live-action project for Maslany since her stint on HBO's Perry Mason in 2020. Maslany spoke a little about her upcoming role in She-Hulk while chatting with Empire Magazine. The Canadian actress said part of her inspiration for playing Jennifer came from the late Scottish musician Sophie. She told Empire, "...what I love about Sophie's music is this combo of organic and electrical, industrial-type sounds that felt connected to She-Hulk." When it comes to her character, the actress called her story the antithesis of most superhero narratives, suggesting we're about to get a whole new take on MCU heroes. The second original Avenger getting some time in an MCU Disney Plus series is Mark Ruffalo, returning to the role of Bruce Banner after his appearance in the post-credits of Shang-Chi and the Legends of the Ten Rings. Ruffalo's last major MCU role was in Avengers Endgame, and it looks like She-Hulk Attorney at Law might be his final performance with the studio. Based on comments he made to Access Hollywood at the Adam Project premiere, it's been speculated that Ruffalo will retire from the MCU. He had high praise for Maslany. Freaking legendary as a She-Hulk. Um, I'm passing the banner onto her. Based on what we see in the trailer for She-Hulk, he'll serve as something of a Hulk coach to Jennifer Walters while she acclimates to her newfound powers. After almost a year of rumors, The Good Place actress Jamila Jamil confirmed she was joining the MCU in She-Hulk Attorney at Law in her debut TikTok post. Jamil will play Titania, aka Mary McFerrin, a longtime rival of She-Hulk. The comic book version of Mary gains her powers from Doctor Doom after she is swept away into Battleworld. She wields superhuman strength and is an expert in hand-to-hand -hand combat. She's quite the match for She-Hulk, but normally finds herself the loser in their many battles. Since The Good Place concluded in 2020, Jamil has been more selective about the projects she takes on. Jamil told Hollywood Life, "...I always want what I do to try and align or embolden my social justice work. I feel like that is something that we are achieving with this show. We're saying something important. We're doing something important. We're pushing the boundaries." When a new MCU project is on the horizon, a frenzy begins online as fans try to figure out if there will be any cameos. She-Hulk Attorney at Law is no different, only this time around, two cameos have already been confirmed by Marvel Studios and Disney. After appearing in 2021's Shang-Chi and The Legend of the Ten Rings for a brief fight scene, Abomination will return for She-Hulk. This time, we'll get to see him in his human form, and Emil Blonsky, played by Tim Roth, even makes an appearance in the trailer. He's locked in a special cell, so we know he's still not to be trusted 14 years after his MCU introduction. How do you feel? Pissed off, I'm ready for round three. Also joining She-Hulk Attorney at Law is Wong, played by Benedict Wong, fresh off his recent appearance in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. We haven't seen Wong yet in a trailer for the show, but since he was the sorcerer fighting Abomination in Shang-Chi and The Legend of the Ten Rings, it makes sense that he would show up. There are plenty of other rumors suggesting characters from all across the MCU will cameo, from Liv Tyler's return as Betty Ross to Kristen Ritter reprising her role as Jessica Jones. But these should be taken with a grain of salt. The first official trailer for She-Hulk Attorney at Law shocked the MCU fandom by giving them a brief glimpse of Frogman. A popular Twitter spoiler account had previously leaked the character's inclusion in the series, 
but it wasn't taken too seriously at the time. No actor has been connected to Frogman, but with Josh Sagara and Griffin Matthews attached to unknown characters, it's reasonably safe to assume one of them is playing the obscure character. Not to be confused with his dad, the villainous Leapfrog, Frogman first appeared in 1982's Marvel team-up No. 121. When Leapfrog, real name Vincent Patilio, gets arrested and put away, his son Eugene decides to use the mantle as a force for good under the modified identity of Frogman. There is no substantial direct connection between Jennifer Walters and Eugene in the comics. However, Leapfrog's criminal endeavors frequently pit him against Daredevil, and Matt Murdock just so happens to be a lawyer who recently made his post-Netflix MCU debut in Spider-Man No Way Home. So that connection could explain his appearance. According to the official synopsis from Disney+, She-Hulk attorney at law will focus on Jennifer Walters, an attorney working at a firm that deals with superhuman clients. Jennifer will also navigate a complicated love life, which is depicted in the first trailer for the series. As she searches for dates, Jennifer will be in her Hulk form, as it looks like the world has already accepted her new look. As previously mentioned, Mark Ruffalo's Hulk will teach Jennifer how to handle her new 6-foot 7-inch form and superhuman strength. Everything looks fresh for Jennifer and She-Hulk, as she is taking on a new job, new physique, and new romantic interests all at the same time, not to mention her first opponent in Titania. There's a brief moment in the trailer where the two women battle it out in a courtroom, but the root of their issues in this particular series is still in the air. Much as the Hawkeye mantle was passed on to Kate Bishop in Hawkeye, we expect the same sort of thing to happen in She-Hulk, with Maslani being the MCU's primary green giant moving forward. Yes! 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 No! No! We all know by now how Bruce Banner gets his powers, but the origin of She-Hulk's powers is a little more obscure, simply because the character has spent comparatively little time in mainstream media. Unless you are a Marvel Comics reader, you might be totally unaware of how Jennifer bulks up. Based on what we see in the trailer, we expect to see Jennifer get her powers early in the series. It would be a surprise to find out she already has them by the time the show begins, although that's not impossible. Here's how it goes down. Jennifer is shot by a man named Nicholas Trask, who is seeking revenge against her father. Her wounds are grave and she needs a blood transfusion, so her cousin Bruce steps up to help her out when there are no other options. With gamma radiation coursing through his veins, there was no way to avoid Jennifer getting the irradiated blood into her system. But it's not just Bruce's blood that turns her, it's her anger and fear that really does the trick. Those are like the baseline of any woman just existing. And just like that, she becomes superhuman. Jennifer is not quite as powerful as Bruce in her Hulk form, and her stature is slightly smaller, which makes her look more human-like and less monster-like. As with the three most recent Marvel Studios Disney Plus series, She-Hulk Attorney at Law will have more than one director. She-Hulk will be split between Kat Koiro and a new Valia. Koiro has directed episodes of popular projects like Dead to Me and It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, while Valia is known for her work on AP Bio and the Sex and the City revival series and just like that. Koiro pushed hard to get the job, telling Collider, I'm a huge fan of the MCU, and I was actually a giant fan of the She-Hulk comics, so when I heard they were making it, I went full court press and really sold myself as the person to bring this story to life. It was a huge and involved process. In an Instagram post from December 2020, Valia revealed Koiro is taking the lead on She-Hulk Attorney at Law, writing, Friggin' stoked to go on this ride together. Koiro is our visionary leader. I'm just doing a few eppies, but it'll be a fun one. The Hollywood Reporter revealed that Jessica Gao was hired as head writer for She-Hulk, Attorney at Law, back in November 2019. Gao is an Emmy-winning writer who nabbed the gold statue for her work on the Rick and Morty episode Pickle Rick. She also has writing credits on Robot Chicken, Big Time Rush, and Silicon Valley, just to name a few. Gao was absolutely flabbergasted to get the job on She-Hulk and shared her excitement in an Instagram post after the big news was announced. She wrote, Dream come true. I am deceased. Don't worry, I will resurrect to do the job. Subsequent social media posts of Gao's regarding the new Disney Plus series have only mirrored her initial excitement. She shared casting news to her feed, and when the first trailer was released, Gao also told the world on Instagram that she couldn't wait for everyone to see Maslani in the role. 
We know for certain that She-Hulk, attorney at law, connects to Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings in a minor way with a blink and you'll miss it confirmation in the trailer. When we see Wong leaving the Fight Club in the Phase 4 film, he opens a portal, and on the other side is a room with a large cell in the middle of it. The same cell can be seen in the She-Hulk trailer, where Jennifer Walters talks to an imprisoned Emil Blonsky. As far as future projects, it's possible we'll see She-Hulk connect to the Thunderbolts movie recently declared as in development. Some fans think Emil is being held in the Cube, a shield prison that houses various superpowered criminals occasionally of the gamma-irradiated variety. All we're saying is if Valentina Allegra de Fontaine needs someone to join a team already consisting of John Walker and Yelena Belova, she could probably swing by the Cube and offer Emil a deal without much trouble. Fans weren't too happy with the quality of the CGI in the first She-Hulk Attorney at Law trailer, but that's not the only controversy surrounding the series. A few sources have come forward to say there were some problems behind the scenes. Former Variety and Collider writer Jeff Snyder revealed in March 2022 on his The Hot Mic with Jeff and John podcast that he's heard about issues with She-Hulk, claiming, I've heard not good things behind the scenes, and I've asked whether it's Moon Knight or Ms. Marvel or Secret Invasion or any of these projects, they are always like She-Hulk is the one that could be a problem." Former Hollywood Reporter editor Matthew Bologna mentioned in his website's newsletter in May 2022 that the newest Disney Plus series are being watched carefully, writing, "...the upcoming She-Hulk is supposedly a mess. I've heard, even with Mark Ruffalo in a small role and Ms. Marvel is another big test for fans, Nobody's saying Marvel's TV output is in trouble, but it's something to keep an eye on. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about the Marvel Cinematic Universe are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.